Next up, uh, Chokri Masawi, founder of Eternal Sun. And uh, he's supplying the next generation of solar testing. You guys know each other? Good. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> Chokri, all yours. Thank you. So thank you for uh, giving me the floor. My name is Chokri founder and CEO of Eternal Sun. Let me give you a brief story about how we started. In 2011, my partner and I, Stephen, were researchers at Delft University of Technology, and we were developing a new type of solar panel that was accurate, cost-effective in production, and reliable. However, we couldn't find any accurate testing system that was able to measure the quality and the reliability of that panel. As such, we developed a system on our own. So what you see here are three systems that we developed, built, and sold. It actually has two main components. And one component is light. We can simulate sunlight up to 99% of accuracy, which is proprietary technology. On the other hand, we have software that can read out the parameters of the impact of the sun on the specific sample. So, since we were actually research institution, uh, researchers, we sold primarily to research institutions all over the world that were in need of an accurate testing system that was able to simulate sunlight continuously nonstop for 10,000 hours in order to conduct, for example, degradation studies. But what happened after that? In 2012, 2013, we received requests from other industries with the ask, can you guys simulate sunlight in standard test conditions? And the answer was yes. The question was, can you simulate also, for example, two sun? So raise the intensity. And the answer was yes. Can you simulate it continuously for 10,000 hours? The answer was yes. So we received requests, for example, from automotive industry, testing dashboards, airbags, steering wheels. We received requests from the chemical industry, testing paint, coatings, plastics, glue, all kinds of polymers, fabric. We received requests from the bioenergy industry. Um, they want to conduct artificial photosynthesis for the purpose of creating new types of algae for biofuels, for example, and so on. So as such, we defined three customer groups. In the first group, you have the R&D institutions that are active in solar. The second is the manufacturing side. They want to conduct specs testing in line at the end of the production. And the third group is, as I mentioned before, everything that has to do with automotive chemical, electronic devices, and so on. As such, the smallest industry that we found is the R&D institutions, obviously. But the biggest is the industrial customer group. And there is much more. For example, aerospace uh, and so on. Um, we have seen also that the solar energy industry is coming back again. Since 2013, the CapEx expenditure is rising. As such, new types of solar panels are being produced, and hence, new type of testing is required. We are now in our third year. In our second fiscal year last year, we generated a revenue of 1 million plus USD. We are debt-free, fully equity financed. So far, no external capital is involved resulting in a sales pipeline of 25 million USD all over the world. Our systems are between 150K and 250K. So we received approximately 300 requests, qualified customer requests for this system. As such, we want to speed up and uh, uh, set up a full-blown sales force. And we would like to raise 3 million USD to set up a satellite office in Asia and in the US to do the sales 
uh, we have a terrific engineering team, but it's now, it's now time to, to close uh, the, the pipeline. Um, that was my presentation, actually. Thank you. Are there questions? Hands up high. I was just curious, uh, what are the service costs involved with your product? Good question. So we have actually uh, three types of revenue model. So we sell the system, and every year the lamps needs to be replaced, which is approximately 10 to 15% of the purchasing price. The system needs to be recalibrated again. And the third revenue model is, instead of supplying a system, we do the testing services by ourselves. Large private equity firms or insurance companies, they want to, for example, restructure a solar park or purchase a solar park. They want to know what the actual return on investment is prior investing. So we do the testing. So that's the third revenue model. So back to your question, 10 to 15%. Miles? I think it's, okay, there it is. Uh, so uh, basically you're looking f uh, to expand in the U.S. right now. That's why you're here trying to, uh, to source potential employees for, to open up a sales operation here? Yes. Or, or, and are you also uh, raising more capital here as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the types of people that you're looking for, are they mainly sales? Or are you doing uh, engineering and testing uh, personnel as well, or is that all done in the back in Holland. We are actually we are looking for two types of people here in the US. Engineering, they can conduct field testing for solar parks, uh, but also sales, uh, solution sales or sales engineering. So it's like actually basically sales. We receive a substantial amount of requests from the US, from the chemical automotive industry from the East Coast, as well as here, California for the solar part. And but somehow, there is a gap in, in doing business together since we are quite overseas, so we need to set up something here. Uh, so the, uh, the reason I'm asking is a, a friend of mine's a recent PhD uh, uh, in material science, and so excellent. I'll talk to you after. Yeah, please contact me afterwards. And you're looking here in the Bay Area specifically, or not specifically? Okay. Thank you, James. Uh, Miles, I saw a question at the back. Where? Who's got, who's got a question? Yeah, sorry, Matt. You didn't address why your total addressable market was only one point something billion dollars? Yeah. One point five billion dollars? Where do you get that number from? I would expect that to be much, much larger, like at least an order of magnitude. Yeah. So you don't think that it's a big market, right? 1.5. Okay. So what I did... <laughs> what we did actually. So the total solar market is approximately 215 million USD. Um, and we found the electronics, automotive, chemical, bioenergy, and fabrics, aerospace, test and measurement industry is approximately as big as the solar industry in total. So that's actually a multiplication. But again, we will be always mistaken in the numbers. The, the idea is that it's is to show that there is a substantial amount of opportunities. Who's your primary customer? Come again? Who's your primary customer? Uh, you mean in the customer groups? Yeah. There's so actually, our first sale was in the Netherlands to a research institution that was focused on solar energy. And we thought, you know, let's expand globally. Let's go to Belgium. <laughs> and let's go to Luxembourg, you know, a kind of an old spot thing. But what happened is that the second largest customer was from South Korea, was a chemical company. So, and they needed a system that could simulate sunlight nonstop 
uh, for a substantial amount of hours. So yeah, then we got lost too, to be honest. Twenty seconds left on the clock. Anybody else with a question? I can have one more question. Competition. Competition, very good. So what happens in the test and measurement side of these kind of industries? It's a sleepy, lousy industry. Uh, the largest competition actually is not a company on itself. It's actually uh, the, co the, the, the companies itself who are developing those things and because of a lack of an accurate system, they do something by themselves. That's what we figured out in many industries. So that's actually the primarily comp competition. So if we can supply a system that is gaining value for the customer and that they don't want to have spent time and people on developing a side product, which is actually the case in our uh, situation, that's, why, that's, that's how we started. I think that's, that's the main competitor to tackle. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you.